Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, let's create a crouching blend space. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using the Cinti animation based locomotion pack, which is currently on sale. Feel free to check it out by using my affiliate link in the description below. If you want to support my channel and what I do on YouTube, feel free to check out my Patreon in the link below and feel free to join our Discord server filled with tons of Unreal Engine developers. Thanks for watching Code of the Row and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is actually set up our crouch input. So I'm just going to head over to the third person folder input and actions. I'm going to create an input action by right clicking, going to input, input action, and call this IA underscore crouch. And I'll double click to open this up and we can leave everything by default. So I'm just going to control save and close this. And now we need to add this into our input mapping context. So I'm going to go back to the input folder and double click the INC underscore default. And once this is opened up, let's expand this mappings. And all we need to do is just add another mapping and I'll add that IA underscore crouch. And let's set this to a key bind. So I'll just left click this to set whatever key bind I want. And I'll hit C on my keyboard to crouch. Just a personal preference. You can do whatever you want. And that's all we need to do. So let's save and close it up. Now, if you don't already, head over to Windows, make sure world settings is enabled and head over to your default pawn class, BP third person and open it up. And the first thing we need to do is just make sure the player can actually crouch because by default, there is no crouch just yet. So I'll select the character movement and I'll search for crouch and make sure can crouch is enabled. And we can also change the half height and the speed that we want during crouched. But for now, I'll leave it at default and just compile and save. And all we need to do in order to crouch is just call it. So I'll right click and search for IA underscore crouch, just like that. So this is the input action that we created and off of started. And when we drag out started, I'm going to look for crouch, which is going to be a crouch function that we already have. And once it's completed, I'm going to just do uncrouch. So I'll highlight over everything, hit C to comment and just call this crouch. And I'll just change this to a darker color, just like that. And if you prefer having this as a toggle, then you can drag out started and look for a flip flop and then just change it just like this. But personally, I'm just going to have it hold and I'm going to set it to completed. So I compile and save. And now when I go back to the third person map, go back and hit C to crouch. You're going to see that the camera does go down, but we don't have any animation set up to actually crouch. So let's head over to our animation blueprint that we created for our Cinti character in the last video. So next to anim class, I'm just going to click on this browse to asset and content browser to find this in my browser and just double click to open this up. So now let's add our Cinti crouch animations and blend spaces. So after you have your Cinti ABP opened up, what I need to do is actually just in the event graph, just make some room and drag out the blueprint update animation. And I'm going to need a validated get and a sequence to pretty much just check all of these nodes, which is our movement. So I'll just click C to comment and call this movement. And then personal preference, I'll just move the comment color to something dark like black. And then after the sequence node, I'm going to have it look for a crouching thing, but we need to set up our crouch variables and a way to tell our animation blueprint to feed data off of. And for that, I'll need to have a reference variable for our character movement component. So what I'm going to do is right click and look for an event blueprint initialize animation. And for this, we're just going to cast this to a character. So the character is the root of our actual BB character, as you can see here when you see on the top right of our parent class. So this will be useful for every single character, NPC, boss, enemies that are using this animation blueprint that has the same skeleton. So I'm going to drag out object and look for a get owning actor like so. And now I just want to right click as character and promote this to a variable that I'm just going to call character. And from our character, let me make some room actually so you can see everything. So from our character, I'm just going to drag this out and look for a character movement variable. So this character movement references our BP third person character where it says character movement over here. So this is actually our character movement component. And from here, I'm going to right click and promote this to a variable called character character movement. So now I'm just going to create this variable called character movement from here and set this up like so. This is just so I can reuse this variable down here when we set up our is crouching. So now that we have this character node we need, we're going to turn this into a validated get right after our event blueprint update animation. So I'm going to drag out character and get character, and then I'm going to right click on this and convert this to a validated get. So a validated get is a useful blueprint node that provides a way to safely access elements within an array. When working with arrays and blueprints, accessing an element directly using an index can lead to errors if the index is out of bounds. A validated get helps avoid these errors by ensuring the index is valid before attempting to access the array element. So it also reduces the risk of runtime errors. So let's go ahead and connect these pins. And if is valid is true, 
we're just going to connect it to our movement component. So if is valid is true, we're going to look for a sequence. And then for then zero, the first thing we're going to be checking is our movement stuff, which is everything that we did in the last video. And now for our then zero, I just want to make sure it sets our crouching, whether our character's crouching or not. So in order to do that, I'm just going to add a new variable here and make sure it's a Boolean and call this is crouching with a question mark at the end. And I'm just going to drag this out and set is crouching. And in order to get if crouching is true, I need to drag out that character movement that we created here, which is going to reference our BP third person character. And since we set up our crouch already and made sure that our character can crouch from the character movement, I just need to call this character movement variable that we created here and bring it down here. So I'm going to drag out this character movement, get character movement, and then call out that is crouching. So if this is crouching, then I'm going to set this return value to the node of to the variable is crouching that we set here. And this pin will go to the next sequence, which is going to be our then one. So I'm going to double click right on this just to set another branch node just to make this look pretty. And I'll highlight over both of these and hit Q on the keyboard to straighten it out. And then I'll comment over all of or I'll click C over all of these just so I can add the crouching stuff. And I'll call this crouch and I'll set the color to something like black just so it's easier on my eyes. And I'll hit compile and save. And that's actually all we need in our event graph. So now back in our locomotion or our animation blueprint or anim graph, click on locomotion to get inside. Now we need to add some more states for our crouch transition and crouching itself. So I'm going to right click and add a state and I'll just call this crouch transition and I'll leave this in the middle. So I want to be able to go from idle to crouch and back to idle from crouch. And then I also want to go from moving to crouch and crouch to moving. And all I need to do is actually pretty simple. So essentially on the very far left one from going from idle to crouch transition, I'm going to click on this, drag out the is crouching and get is crouching and then just plug it into this result. So basically if our character is crouching, then we will actually go to this transition and the same thing for movement to crouch itself. So I'm just going to copy paste that and just plug this in. And now for both of these nodes from crouch to idle and crouch to movement, I'm going to double click in here. And when I have my itch is crouching in the event graph, in the event graph, I'm just going to look for a not Boolean like so and just plug this in. And this is pretty much just going to check that if as crouching is false. So I'll just copy this. And when I go back to locomotion, I'll do the same thing from crouch to movement and plug this in like so. And essentially, since this is just our crouch transition, all I'm going to do in here is add a blend pose is add blend poses by Boolean to make sure our character can stand and idle. So we can go from crouching idle to standing and vice versa. So I'm going to right click and look for a blend poses by bool and just connect the output result to this. We're going to set up an animation if this is true and or if this is false. So I'm going to drag out is crouching and this is going to be our active node or our active value, which is going to determine which one of these animations play. So if is crouching is set to true, then we want to look for a crouch animation like so. So it'll be the stand to crouch animation that plays just like that. And I'll move this up a little bit. And if is crouching is set to false, we're going to go from crouch back to standing and plug it into the false node. And I'll hit compile save. And now we just need to do one last step, which is actually adding a blend space and movement while we're crouched. So now I'm going to add another state and just call this crouch. And this will actually be our crouch blend space that we need to create in order to determine our movement while we're in, while we're crouching. So I'm just going to connect this up and down just so we can leave crouch mode and enter it. So pretty simple and straightforward. I'm just going to go into one of these and copy paste these two node. So I'm just going to go to my locomotion. After I copied it, I'm going to go over to the left one here. So crouch transition to crouch will actually just be is crouching is set to true and hit compile and save. And then back in my locomotion, when we leave the crouch to crouch transition to one of these two, I'm just going to leave the not Boolean in here because this is because now we're no longer crouching. And the final step in our AVP is actually to set up a blend space in our crouch. So let's go ahead and set up a blend space 1D. So in my third person map, I'm just going to right click where my Cinti character is, where I'm leaving all my animation stuff for this video and just right click and I'll just right click, go to animation, go to legacy and select blend space 1D and select our polygon Cinti character skeleton. And I'll just call this crouch underscore BS for blend space. And I'll double click to open this up. And once that's open, we're just going to adjust the horizontal axis to call this something like speed. Minimum value will be zero. Maximum value, let's check it out in our BP third person character. So in our BP third person character, our max crouch speed is 300 as stated here. Max walk speed crouch is 300. So I'm just going to set the max speed to something like 300 for the maximum axis value. And I'll set this to just two divisions, snap to grid. And this looks good to me. So we just need our actual crouching animations into in our blend space. And because I set this up as a 1D blend space, my character will only be able to go forward while crouching. So I'm going to look for a crouch idle in a masculine pose and place this all the way to the left like so. 
And then I also want to look for a crouch strafe F and just look for whichever one is forward strafe strafing in the masculine pose. So this one looks good to me. And when I hold control, I can preview this. So when we're in idle, we're just standing here like so. And when we move forward, as we get faster, we'll do our full animation of just walking forward. So I'll hit control save and go back to our AVP. And in our locomotion crouch state, I just need to add a, I just need to add that blend space. So I'm just going to drag that crouch BS over here and you'll see that speed is currently set to zero. And in order to just get that or fix this, all we need to do is set our velocity vector length as we did previously for our movement speed and just set it here. So I'm going to get, I'm just going to drag out the velocity and then get the vector length to determine our character speed and just connect it into the speed variable or parameter as shown here. And now I'll hit compile and save. And now when I head back to my third person map and hit play, and now when I hit play, you can see that I play my idle to crouch animation and crouch to idle or standing to crouch and crouch to standing. And I can move forward. And when I crouch, I'll come down slowly and start crouching. And this is only going to be able to go forward. But if you go left and right, it's going to play those same animations because we only played because we made that blend space 1D as opposed to a 2D blend space like we did in the last video. And now let's create a blend space with direction. Now I'll just head back to my Cinti character folder where all my animation stuff is. And then I do, I'm just going to duplicate my movement underscore BS. And now I'll just call this one crouch direction underscore BS. And I'll double click to open this up. And once this is open, all I need to do is just replace my anims with the same direction it's in. I can leave my horizontal and vertical as is. I can just change the max value for the speed to something like 300. Not 100% necessary just because this will automatically change as soon as you... When you're crouching, it'll change in your character movement component anyways, but we'll just keep it at 300. So I'm actually going to undo that. And then I'm going to get rid of all the walking stuff. So we don't have any walk crouches, I believe. Let me see. Yeah. And then I'll just bring this down. I'll just bring all of these down here like so. And then I'll change it to my, my maximum access value speed of 300 like so. And I'll just drag these back up actually to 300. And now I just need to replace all of them with crouching animation. So you'll see that the bottom three are our idle crouch. So I'm going to just look for the idle crouch and just replace the bottom three with that idle crouch. So I'll drag one to the bottom left, bottom middle, and bottom right. And then the top ones, let's look for crouch. So for the corners, the upper corners, we're going to look for the crouch, back, strafe, B, like this in each corner. And now we need a forward strafe left, forward, and right. So I'll delete these three in the middle, like so, and look for the forward one to put right in the center. The left one will go on the left over here and the right one will just go right over here. And now I'll hit compile, save, go back to my animation blueprint and I'll just uncheck this and bring in that new crouch direction blend space right in my event graph. So I'll just drag it in like so from our content browser, plug this in. We already made the direction variable in the last video. So I'll just gra grab this, get direction and plug this in. And then for the speed, we can just, we can actually just use this. So I'll just connect the velocity vector length like so. And now when I hit compile and save and hit play, and while I'm crouched, you'll see that I can go forward, I can go backwards, I can go right, and I can go left. And our character's playing the animations correctly. And that covers our crouch blend space animations using Cinti based locomotion characters. Thanks for watching Coded Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my channel, feel free to check out the Patreon in the link below. If you want to get the Cinti animation asset, Feel free to check out my affiliate link in the description below and feel free to join our Discord community filled with Unreal Engine developers.